Welcome back, Zero K fans, to more Nanolays at Dawn. I remain your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. And we're on a map match between Natostic and King Lunchbox on Ravage, and I haven't seen Natostic in a while. Can't remember the last time I saw them. I think I did a 2v2 with them. Like a 2v2 replay of theirs. But yeah, they are now pretty high up. Platinum rank, I guess, or diamond rank. I think that's how it works. Anyway, let's go! So Tostic going for the Spider Factory, while at the same time King Lunchbox going for Cloakies. And King Lunchbox is going to be at a bit of an advantage as a result, because Cloakies, I mean, everything Cloakie has deals with fleas. Venoms are a bit of a problem, but you put in some Ronin, you're fine. Like, seriously, Ronin, Mass Ronin, they'll be good. King Lunchbox will probably go for that once they see the spiders. Yes, spiders do have the advantage of the cliffs. They can take advantage of the fact that there's loads of paths you can take that are only cliff-based. So we will probably see a lot of that. Actually, we're seeing that right now, as these fleas are basically coming around the back. Good thinking, Atostic. Actually, better thinking in there is that they have the fleas set up so that they can use them as scouts. Which is always what you want. If you can put the fleas in so your opponents can't see them... Oh, can they... Ah, they've been spotted. No, they haven't been spotted! Ah, they haven't spotted! No, Atostic, you could have... You could have had that for free! I mean, it'll be fine. You'll actually... Wow, that is free. That's a free metal extractor. Sheesh. Well, atostic has got a really nice start here. King Lunchbox not having the defensive setup to actually deal with that metal extractor. Or to really deal with anything, actually. These two conjurers are basically going to be killed for free. The moment King Lunchbox is trying to push forward and deal looks like possibly a harassment blow, but they're getting heavily damaged. One conjurer is an, like one conjurer is huge. I always say like go for the conjurers, go for the builds if you can. One conjurer is a big freaking deal. Two conjurers, that is amazing. And the flea gets away. And, I mean, it's stuck on the cliff, but still, killing a Conjurer and a Metal Extractor in the early game for free. And stopping everything your opponent tries to do to counterattack. Atostic has an absolutely amazing... This is living the dream. This is the best possible start a Spider player could ask for. That is ideal. I mean, the Flea... Okay, the Flea just threw itself away. But, it did work. Like, getting rid of a Conjurer alone is huge. Especially that early in the game. I mean, look at the... The economy doesn't quite show it yet because the commander in the front for King Lunchbox is doing a fine job making up for that, but still, we will see Atostic very quickly get ahead. Anyway, addressing something in the chat is a bit of a downtime. Being asked, what is required for the things I cast? I'm not sure what that question means. Do you mean, like, what do I look for in a game that I pick up to cast? Like, that actually, a replay that I look for? Or are you asking what I use when I'm casting? Like, the actual, like, microphone and microphone recording setup, computer, that sort of thing. Oh, a replay, okay. So usually when it replays, I will typically, if I'm not being requested, I'm more open with requests. But if it's not a request, I will just look for usually 1v1s in the Neutron Star or Singularity level. Ideally ones that are match made. I try to avoid ones done in private rooms. More out of courtesy. I figure if someone's doing a private room, they're either doing something a little bit weird, or they just kind of want to be left alone. But matchmaking to me, that feels more public to me. So I will prioritize matchmaking. If I can't find any matchmaking matches, I might grab private matches for people I know are okay with being cast. Like, I've cast them before. It's not a big deal. But I typically avoid private matches. If it's a request, however, I don't care. Like, if someone requests, hey, please do this match, then pretty open. I think I've... I'm not really keen on doing, like, 8v8, like, giant team games. But 2v2, 3v3, those are fine. I'll do this by request. Occasionally, I'll do them on my own, but usually I'll do them by request. And... FFAs I've done on a couple occasions, but I do find FFAs to be a little long and drawn drawn out. I mean, I wouldn't mind if it was like an hour for like a five or six player FFA, but if it's an hour and a half for three player FFA, that just doesn't seem worth it to me. So FFA is a bit more by my own judgment. 2v2, 3v3, if you request it, I will almost certainly do it. 1v1, yes. If you request it, very likely I'll do it. And if it's not, there's no requests, then Super Giant, sorry, Neutron Star or Singularity match made 1v1 is the priority. I mean, if you want me to cast one of your replays, just request it. That's that's what I mean. I just, I'm not going to get to it on my own if it's not a higher level 1v1, because I figure higher level 1v1, people are going to be more comfortable being streamed. It's going to be a more entertaining stream. Mostly it's just people are more comfortable being streamed. I find newer players or lower ranked players tend not to enjoy being streamed as much, and I don't, I don't blame them at all. So I totally understand that. It's Again, it's largely a courtesy. But if you request it, if you want me to cast your games, I will do it. If that's 
If that would, if that's what you want, then you've you are you are requesting that I do it. So yeah. Anyway, back to the game though. Not much action really has been going on there. <laughs> Had a lot of downtime to go into the details of my selection process because really just expansions. Both players going rather calmly for expansions. Not really a whole lot of harassment on either side, which is honestly kind of surprising. I mean, Atalistic I can sort of see because fleas are a little hard to harass with, but I mean, Venom Redback can push with that. King Lunchbox, on the other hand, why are you not? You've got Glaives. You are like one of the best raiders in the entire game, and nope. No harassment. Just trying to build up, getting that higher level econ. Which, at this point, Atostic has definitely gotten the advantage of. They have the caretaker set up, they have the economy advantage, and King Lunchbox has been accessing a fair bit, to be quite honest. So right now, yeah, that's the thing. There's kind of need more production. Like, this caretaker is huge. And then another caretaker afterwards, which is actually on cue. Perfect. King Lunchbox will need that. I mean, between that caretaker and everything else being built around the map, that should be fine. They're Yeah, their accessing is gone, but at the same time, they're still 15 metal behind. So, Atostic has the, that advantage. They are playing spiders, but they have been focusing primarily on Venom Redback, which is exactly what they need to deal with these glaives. Ah, but the Venom was out of position! Oh, that has got to hurt! If that Venom was in position, those glaives would have all been dead. Like, every single one of them would have gone down to the Venom Redback combo. But, no, that Venom just happened to be a little bit too far behind. And at least, at least managing to make up for it with the Lotus. But that's got to hurt. Just the worst timing. Which is kind of funny, too, because I think they should have radar. That Yeah, they got total radar coverage of that. Not sure why that happened. Like, bear in mind, with spiders, weavers have radar. So as long as you have builders around, you've got radar. It's super easy to see what's going on. So I don't know, I guess Atostic must not have been paying attention to that one second. And King Lunchbox is able to take advantage of that and only lose about half a dozen glaives at the, for getting rid of a redback. That's amazing value. Of course, the downside is Atostic has most of the map, and King Lunchbox is not raiding, which they very well could, but they're not. And now the pushing in here, the Recklesses should be able to take care of this, no problem. Yeah, the glaives, unfortunately, not coming in here, not being used ideally. This frontline force glaive is not a thing you can really do. You can sort of do it if you have enough of them, but King Lunchbox does have the economic disadvantage. So, not really the time I'd go for it. Like I said, going around the back, going around here, I could totally see that working. Get, get through here, take out the commander, which hasn't been upgraded, take out a bunch of metal extractors, there's no defenses there. That'd be awesome! I mean, yeah, there might be a counterattack, but whatever. You've taken care of most of your opponent's economy, and that counterattack's gonna be kind of slow, so just go for it. But no, I don't think King Lunchbox is even thinking about raiding. Which is a bit of a shame, because that's one of the things that's cloaky, is that they aren't that straightforward a fighter factory. If you want that, go for shields. If you want something that's reasonably flexible, but much more focused on being able to assault... Like, if you want something that's reasonably flexible, is able to assault the front lines with the right army, but is also able to raid really effectively. Cloakie's a great generalist, but it is a jack of all trades. If you want something that just pushes the front line really well with limited raiding capacity, but amazing just hard push capacity, go for the Shieldbot Factory. Every time. But looks like King Lunchbox trying to go for that frontline glaive assault, which isn't working, and that is going to be giving a lot of reclaim. I mean, the the Weavers are right there. It's, I mean, so is King Lunchbox's commander, so I'll give them that. But yeah, at this point, I just don't see it. Like, King Lunchbox has got the Aegis built up. Not entirely sure why. They're not dealing with a lot of artillery. They do have, yes, these forces, these recluses are dealing some damage, but they're not really able to get in. I guess the idea is get the Aegis, turn it into an Aspis, and then... Or not an Aspis. Is this still Aspis? Yes, it is still Aspis. Turn it into an Aspis, move it along with the forces, so the Glaze have a bit more shielding. They can get close to the recluses without taking damage. Not a bad idea. But still, I... I kind of don't agree. I do agree with the use of slings, though. That's not a bad idea. It's a bit unusual, but it makes sense. You now, outrange their skirmisher forces and outrange their defenses. But at the same time, we got ravens coming in here. I mean, at the same time, we have gunships and air, so all the flight, all the skies belong to Atostic right now. Man, yeah, now the ages is up. I'm curious, are they going for, What are they going for exactly here? I, I hope they're not trying to turtle up, because Bulky Bot Factory is not the turtle up factory. They're not the turtle up and counterattack factory. They're the sneaky push forward factory. But no, it looks like they are 
planning to use the Aegis as a way of providing a bit of a firebase. And bad, not a bad idea. Just, again, I would turn it into an Aspis. Make it mobile. Push it forward. At the same time, Expansion Hester King Lunchbox have really found nothing. And I, it's just, like I said, it's just so much raiding potential that is not being used. Uh, like I said, I think King Lunchbox, I don't know why they think that though, because they're, they're, they're gold. Three, they've they got a fair amount of experience with the game. Not sure why, the, I guess, you know, when you're playing against newer players or playing against players that don't build as much defenses, Glaives can feel like a really strong generalist force. They can just push anywhere and win. So I totally understand the logic, but that's not really the case here. Like right now, it's not working. The Glaives aren't finding that. They try to move in, and it doesn't work. Even with the Aspis, they're going to try to move in, and it's just not going to work. And now, there's King Lunchbox's commander going down. The Ravens will not die here. That's the thing. Their Stardust is nice. It's helpful. Actually, I think I got rid of one of them. I got rid of two of them, actually. But that was after the commander died, so not as worth it, I'm afraid. But yeah, transform the Aspis to move in. This force would still work. I mean, using the shields to buffer for the Glaives to get in front, and the Glaives get in range and deal their damage. Still deal a lot of damage. You don't have to worry about HP if the shields are in front of them. So, hey, you got that. That's... It's just a matter of making a mobile. Also, it looks like a possible side harassment... Yeah, okay. A possible side harassment force full of Ronin and Reavers. Curious. I feel like these could really be swapped and it'd be way more productive. Like, if the Ronin and Reaver was on this front line and the Glaze were over here and going around the back, that would probably work a bit better. But that's what we have now in King Lunchbox. I mean, they're trying, but they have been holding that one front line without any real harassment outside of that for the entire match. And King Lunchbox, they're at a third of their economy of their opponents. Atostic is doing really well. 65 metal per second. At King Lunchbox with 24, they do have some potential for reclaim if they put up a worker here. Get a conjurer or two, but they have none. So, no. We aren't going to see that. We might see the Reaver Ronin manage to push in, but I don't expect that. Astonic is aware that's likely to come through. And, yeah, I just don't see that really working out at that point. I mean, they might come in, they might deal some damage, the stingers will rip them to shreds. Yeah, I don't really see it. At the very least, the crab is being destroyed. So there's that. But it should be able to tear apart the Age of Shield. I mean, it deals enough damage that, yeah, the Age of Shield doesn't have much of a chance. A few shots there. Rip the shield down. Although, on the other hand, the sling is able to get in. I mean, that's the nice thing about this. The sling is able to get in and just deal damage from a safe location. It's not much damage. But, hey, the Aegis can't really be hit yet. One more shot and then it's open. Actually, two more shots now. Boom. That's the last of the shield. Now the shield's open. But, hey, it's something... Oh, what? Really? Oh, shit. Yeah, now... There it goes. Now it pushes through. Now it's gone through, and that's just the thing. It's too much. Oh, six, right, 600 damage a shot. But still, the crab not able to really have a secure position thanks to that shield. So yeah, that Aegis is a really smart move. Like, I totally agree with the Aegis. I just kind of wish it was made mobile. But, eh, it's working all right. And we have the raiding. We have stuff coming in on the sides, actually dealing some damage. Getting over some of the Tostix economy. And we have the Reavers coming in the front lines. There we go. That's what I wanted to see. And the Reaver Ronin Assault doing about as well as I expected over to the south, which is not very, but eh, worth a shot. Still, that's what the Glaze would have been really useful. Do they not know you can transform this? Like, it doesn't really change much. Less HP, and I think maybe less shielding? Nope, same shielding. 3600 HP shield. Man, if they made that mobile, it'd be perfect. Like, that'd be seriously perfect if they made that mobile. Although, on the other hand, hey, there's the shield doing its job. The Aspis is mobile. I think King Lunchbox could push back this front line, do a bunch of damage, possibly go to the economy that Tostic's been building up. I don't think they'd be able to win at this point. I think it's still a little bit too late for that. But who knows? I mean, that's a potentially large amount of damage that could be dealt here. And the Tostic, they're mostly dealing with their economy. They're kind of making sure that they don't lose rather than pushing in for the final push for the win. So, there is room for King Lunchbox to claw their way back in this game, but unfortunately, they've just lost the Aegis, so never mind. Damn. That sucks. 
Yeah, like that was five minutes ago. That like the Aspis transformation opportunity was five minutes ago. Would have been amazing. Did not happen. Not sure King Lunchbox has planned at this point. But I don't think it's gonna last for long with Atostic basically just going in like these swifts going in the back lines. Probably mostly for scouting, possibly for maybe getting rid of some caretakers, getting rid of some economy structures. But hey, at this point, Atosic knows exactly what King Lunchbox is up to, and is exactly that there's nothing there stopping them. They might as well push forward. Might as well go for it. It looks like are we gonna get are we gonna get a crab drop? Can we get a crab drop? I don't think I don't think Charons can actually carry crabs. I think you need the Valkyries. Or Hercules, rather. Not sure. I'm not sure if it says what the mass limit is. It does not. Transport heavy. Does this count as oh transportable heavy? Okay. So no. It it will require Hercules. That's cool. I didn't I haven't even looked at that stat before. So at any rate, King Lunchbox does appear to be seeding the front line in order to go for a harassment backline approach. This could actually work. I mean, a lot of economy has been built up over the south side of the map, so avoiding the highly defended front lines theoretically could work. But I don't know. King Lunchbox like, they have a decent force for harassment. Oh, not even going to the bottom! Learning their lesson somewhat, going around the side, they're going to take some damage in the glaives thanks to the stinger, but not much, and there's really nothing else that's going to stop them. This energy pylon is the one thing that could be a problem, however. The explosion that the glaives aren't careful will destroy them, and that's the thing. At this point, this is the last-ditch approach. King Lunchbox has to win with this set of glaives, or they're done. And unfortunately, they're not line-moving, this is why I talk about line-move all the time, because now the Venoms are able to tear them apart. The Venom stun is ripping them apart because they are constantly point moving, which means they're constantly right next to each other, which means they're not being efficient with how they actually, how they move. And then the energy pylon destruction, that's going to happen, and they're all going to die. This is it. That's game. King Lunchbox just threw away their entire army. If they didn't throw away on that, the commander, the commander's going to go down, but that's going to finish it off. Like, the commander's going to go down, and then that might kill the pylon as well. <gasps> the commander lost 50 HP? Seriously? <laughs> oh, man, Atostic, you... How did you even survive that? I mean, the commander's fine now. The pylon's gonna go down next, and that's if it goes down at all. Like, oh, I mean, if Tostek had lost their commander, that would have been... That would have been death, regardless. And, yeah, that... I mean, it would destroy the pylon, but still... That's King Lunchbox's entire army. This is why I always, always, always emphasize the use of line move. Even for large armies. Or split it up into two smaller armies. Just put, like, two different control groups. One set of glaives for each control group, and then you have ten control groups. You don't need them for buildings, because buildings... its I can't show it right now, because I'm not playing right now, but right here, there'd be buildings on the side, and you'd have, like, Alt-Q through Alt-T by default as your production building selections. So there's ten control groups you can play with. There's plenty of room to have multiple control groups. And so that's the thing. If, you, if line move for a large army like that is too much of a hassle, well, go for a smaller army. It doesn't need to be a large army. It could be, you know, it could be only a dozen units for each group or something like that. And then it's easy to line move them in a way that doesn't cause them to get in each other's way or doesn't require that you make multiple lines in order to have a sensible group, but at the same time keeps them separated enough that splash damage doesn't kill them. Because that seems to be the biggest thing for King Lunchbox in the use of Glaives is that, I mean, other than the fact that the use of Glaives is not the best option strategically, tactically, there's also the problem with the fact that the Glaives are being used in this point move way that causes them to get completely caught out by anything that deals splash damage, which means they're way less efficient than they could otherwise be. And they're getting in each other's way, because 0k units can't shoot through each other. I wouldn't be surprised if King Lunchbox was a StarCraft player, the way they're moving these around as if they were Marines. Because yeah, a group of Terran Marines is no problem. You have three Terran Marines, you walk them forward, death bolt. You're good. But with Glaives, they shoot through each other. With Glaives, they can't shoot through each other, so you just get no progress at all. You get no value whatsoever coming out of the glaze because only the front line is able to deal damage. The rest of them are worthless. This is not StarCraft. Units have to actually be able to shoot through the space between each other. They cannot shoot through each other without hurting each other, and they will generally not try to hurt each other, as a rule. So, at this point, I mean, it's just a matter of Atosta coming in here and actually wrecking everything, and I don't see that happening. I mean, I see that happening, yes, and eventually. It's just they're not going for it right now, and I'm not sure why. Because they could just go. They could 
easily rip everything apart here. It'd be no problem whatsoever. And it looks like a Venom Red back coming in here to try to deal with this stuff. That will do the trick. Or should do the trick. But Atostic, I'm not sure they realize they are like four times their opponent's economy. This is trivially easy. I don't understand why this is... Okay, not trivially easy, but it is pretty easy. They're just being extremely careful. I think they think that there's something King Lunchbox has up their sleeve. Because King Lunchbox does keep coming in with these giant forces out of nowhere that then keep dying because they're right next to stuff that deals splash damage and they're not taking into account splash damage. But, yeah, that's the thing. They're not really... Not really big of a threat. Atostic could rush in here and rip everything apart, but it's good that Atostic wants to make sure they only do it when they absolutely know they're going to live, but doesn't matter. King Lunchbox throws in the towel. That is game. And wow, King Atostic has so much of an advantage in every metric. I mean, King Lunchbox had the occasional army value advantage, but they didn't attack during those periods, so it didn't really matter. And even then, Atostic still had defense on them, and Glaives do not deal with static defense very well. So it looks like that really just came down to being willing to be bold. Broadly speaking, bit of a basic thing, but meh, if you're gonna, if you're gonna play an RTS and you're not gonna attack your opponent, then you generally don't deal much damage. Which sounds kind of obvious now that I say it. Which it is obvious, but it's also something that you, you can forget when you're playing the game. It, it actually is an important thing to bear in mind. Alright, so we have another, apparently a request coming in here from, yeah, one of the people watching. So I'll be doing that in a couple minutes. That'll be, seriously, bum crumbs that? Can't have a better name? Whatever. Bum Crumbs versus Frenzy Mode on Ot oh, Otago. I haven't seen that map outside of tournaments. So yeah, that'll be up in a couple minutes, so stay tuned.